Linda Benglis is perhaps best known for the full-colour advertisement she placed in Art Forum magazine in 1974, consisting of a nude photograph of herself posing with a large latex dildo. A reaction to the phallocentrism of the contemporary art world, it certainly caused a stir. Her oeuvre, however, is much wider than merely overt feminist gestures, as visitors to this enthralling 50-work survey show at the Hepworth Wakefield, the first to take place in a UK institution, will discover. Describing her 3D sculptural pieces as paintings that have escaped from the frame of all the canvas, Benglis was heralded in the 60s as the heir to Pollock when she began creating her so-called fallen paintings, pouring liquid plastic onto the floor and against the walls. She is a lover of a wide range of materials, bronze, polyurethane, glitter, paper and film, to name but a few, and she has studios across the globe in New York, New Mexico, Greece and India. Throughout her career, the 73-year-old artist has made a concerted effort to push against any definition and to resist categorisation. I think artists create their own rules, she says, or break them. I spoke to Linda at the opening of her exhibition. Um, you've spoken to yourself as, as being primarily a painter, even though to the onlooker most of your works appear sculptural. Um, and you've talked about images and being symbols of feelings and associations and expressions of space. So what sort of a process do these feelings have to go through to become a Linda Bengalis work? Well, uh, I, the, the process ba basically is a manipulation of the materials that are drawing. I draw. I draw in space with the materials. I want to see an image that uh, expresses the material quality or the materialness of whatever it is. Uh, it presents itself uh, and it, it presents itself in a decorative way, finally. Uh, and it's basically a simple idea made more complicated so that they are arrangements of space uh, in the context. So does it start from the material or does it start from the idea? Both. But, you know, it's the chicken and the egg. Mm -hmm. you know, what, where does it start is a good question because it can start from an inspiration, it can start from an idea about scale or feeling. My fountains began that way. I, I thought when our, uh, it starts from a large feeling that I must express. Um, and you've also spoken about pleasure and sensuality and a lot of your films from the 70s explore no these notions and sexuality also. Absolutely. Do you see these works as part of the larger movement of women artists at the time? Absolutely. You do. And would yeah. you consider yourself a feminist artist? Well, I can't deny it. I, I, I often just kind of beg the question. I'd say, you know, my driver's license, my passport, you know, the, my body, you know, my likes. I'll say I'm a woman and I make art. Therefore, I make, you could say I make women's art. Women are, women are beautiful. I make beautiful art, do, you know. What do we have to say? I don't have to describe my art. The art describes itself. I don't have to say I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Um, so you're, you've, you've fought to avoid categorization throughout, really? Well, I, I wasn't. I think that you have to act uh, as you feel. I think I didn't want to make any apologies. I think women must act as sources of power, not otherwise. So I just felt I didn't have to go to meetings that was taking up time. My best time was spent in my studio and feeling that I, by making the work, made the statement. Uh, as an artist, I think being an artist is a humanist issue and not a sexist issue. Yeah, of course. So, um, 
That's it. You've worked with a huge variety of materials. And do you think you were influenced by your, your father's building materials business when you were? Well, the, the, my father had different materials and that I knew with these different materials you can build things. I think that uh, allowed me to think freely about my father uh, could, has, has as his resource all kinds of things. Like we, he built houses for us. Uh, not that he himself built them, but they were built for us. We had new houses, or we, he built a barbecue pit. I played in the barbecue pit, or I played under the houses. You know, we, some of the houses were on stilts because we had camps, or they were in the rice paddies, so they had to be high off the ground. Uh, I, I felt at ease with the ground, what was in the ground, and what was uh, made that was, could be made to, so I felt that nature and man-made things were one and the same, basically. Has this influenced your studios? Because I know you've got them across the globe, and you, you, some of them you built or designed yourself as well. Well, I, I collected doors. That was probably because my father sold doors and windows as well, windows, sashes. And uh, so I felt I co collected doors. And then in the desert of New Mexico, I uh, took the doors, the old doors that were from an old nunnery in New Orleans from mid-1800s. And I put these doors in my mind. I had them. So I designed, walked out my space, basically, for my studios, three different large rooms with 14 feet, foot ceilings and large vigas, 11 to 12 feet in diameter, 22 feet long, trees, you know, uh, two feet, you know, for the 20 feet, so all these vigas crossing in, in three rooms, as I said, 15 by 15 by basically cubes, 15, and then 22 by 42, big room, so it's a zigzag. But I put the doors, a very narrow door that was only this wide in Cyprus, that was the entrance door. And then, uh, so I put all these doors and then you go inside and they're huge, big doors, nine and a half feet high, eight feet wide that open out into the big room and then another same thing, not so high. And then large doors that open out into the world, the desert. So, but I've, I felt that by walking in and out of a space with the doors, they describe the, the material. Well, the, I knew the materials, so I just, it's, it's like building a house with upside down furniture and towels that are, or blankets. In other words, whatever you have, you use, you know. Do you consider your studios to be works of art in their own right? Well, there's certainly uh, areas for me to play and feel good about. I, I, I think the, the studio is a very uh, special place. Are they private and to you? They're very private. The, the studio that I made with, with uh, people that knew how to lay adobe. I, we built them with mud, basically. So that seemed to me a very, it's a very great place to be in the middle of nowhere with these, with this, you know, with this thinking. Are there any materials that you would really like to work with but haven't tried out yet? Mm, pro most probably, and most certainly, I, you know, I look forward to doing that. This is the first time I've had a chance to really work with paper to make my own paper. So I've drawn on paper. I've made paper in India at the Gandhi Ashram. We've made paper. I embedded uh, different papers in a collage fashion with wet paper. So I'd done some paper work, but this was the first chance I did these pieces where we stuff uh, you know, wet paper into the rubber molds. Uh, but I, now I'm stretching the sheets 
and that's really exciting in making the different forms rather than pressing it into a mold form and making different colors and drawings and paintings on that. So everything's at play. I'm inventing. I like to invent new forms. And do you consider light to be a material as well, or do you see that as something? Light, that, a material? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I remember when Dan Flavin gave a lecture at Brooklyn Museum Art School, he was using light bulbs around a pink canvas, and his brother, twin brother, had died. It was a memorial, memoriam to him, basically. And uh, I said, why not use the lights themselves? A light bulb went up in his head like that. But, but he would have done that anyway. And I said to Ryman, why not paint directly on the wall? He would have done that anyway. That's the way things are moving. It's just because I was there and I had my pleasure was to think about the logic of progression, I was lucky just to be there at the right time. So I thought quickly about things and acted on it. We have to mention the Art Forum in 1974. You've said that you have no regrets about doing it. Do you think it helped your career or do you think it made you slightly pigeonholed? Well, it did all of those things. Okay. It, it did and I don't regret any of it. Would you do it again now? Oh, that's a ridiculous question. <laughs> would, would you take up uh, your teething ring now? Would you uh, eat baby food? I mean, to me, that seemed the obvious thing to do. We do it in the context. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>